Hello, I'm Matthew Jaron, museum curator at the University of Dundee and organiser of the Public Art Dundee project and welcome to uh, the latest in a series of virtual public art walks and this is part two of our uh, exploration of the many pieces of public art in Stobswell. And so we're starting outside uh, the library here, a very splendid building and it's worth just pointing out that there is some rather nice uh, carving here. Uh, so the library is one of the, the Carnegie libraries in Dundee, uh, built 1902-4 by William Alexander and James Thompson. And there's a couple of pieces inside that are worth pointing out, which I'll just cut to some photos of. Firstly, uh, just as you go in, there are uh, bronze relief sculptures of Andrew Carnegie, who funded the library, and uh, Helen Symers, who gifted money to uh, actually buy the land that the library was built on. And they were designed by James Thompson, who was the city architect, and made by uh, the company T&E Nichols uh, in time for the library opening in 1905. Uh, the other piece that's in here is much more uh, modern. Uh, it's a textile hanging by Sheila Page, which was created in 1985, uh, to mark the 40th anniversary of uh, Hiroshima. And this was originally actually displayed in the Wellgate Library um, and then was later moved here. Uh, this was actually apparently the winner of a nationwide competition, uh, which was judged by uh, the artist and uh, Duncan Johnson tutor Will McLean. Right, now we're just going to head right next door uh, to the next building, which is another of the real architectural gems of Stobswell. So this is St Patrick's Church and uh, again a wonderfully decorated building. Uh, this one was by uh, the local architects T.M. Kappen and W.G. Lamond, uh, 1897. And as you can see uh, it has um, some rather nice gargoyles on it and also this um, rather nice statue here of St. Patrick. Okay, we're just going to cross over onto Craigie Street here and then we're just going to turn round to show you this nice piece here. Um, so this is one of a series of gable end brick murals that were created by John Gray, now the City Council Public Art Officer, but uh, made at the time that he was working uh, for the uh, Dundee District Council Engineering Department in the late 1980s. And they were doing a series of environmental improvements around Dundee. You know, there was a kind of a massive transformation of the city that took place at that time. And much of it was achieved thanks to funding from the Manpower Services Commission, uh, which was a kind of back to work scheme for tradesmen. And in particular, they got funding in Dundee to uh, help train bricklayers. And so an awful lot of these murals are made out of brick uh, because because that was what the funding was for. So you'll see a number of these pieces all around Dundee and, and indeed I've, I've shown other examples in some of the other tours so do uh, check those out. Right, let's carry on along Craigie Street and then we'll go down oops, Kembach Street Gorgeous old cinema building there on the left. Um, right, so this is the outside of the Boomerang Centre, a fantastic community resource. And uh, you'll see our next piece just here. Uh, and this is the biggest of the Open Close Stobswell murals. So I talked about Open Close Stobswell in part one of this tour, a uh, fantastic initiative uh, led by Russell Pepper to uh, create sort of small scale murals uh, around Dundee, started in the city centre uh, in 2017 and then the second phase was here in Stobswell in 2018. And this piece is, as I'm sure you'll be able to tell, a portrait of Billy Mackenzie uh, by Gary Milne. Uh, this is definitely one of the most popular pieces uh, that they've done in Stobswell. Now, if we just look at the, uh, the front of the Boomerang Centre here, we'll see uh, three other doors, uh, all of them I think absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and I'll cut to some photos so you get a better view. 
So uh, starting from the right, we have Ideas Factory by James Gemmell. Then in the middle, we have The Stompswell Chimney Magpies by Keir Murdoch. And then on the left, we have Dundee Creativity by Susie Purvis. Now, just coming down here, um, unfortunately, Google Street View hasn't been quite up to date here because uh, we can't yet see uh, the piece that's just gone on this door here, but I'll cut to a photo of it. So this is uh, another open close commission, but this was done more recently, uh, just uh, last year, 2019. Um, and this piece is by Lucy Hendry. And then just further along the road, we have another one of the open close doors here. Um, uh, there's another nice abstract piece by uh, BUA, which is a duo comprising Louise Rowland and Stephen Burke. Uh, and that's from the original um, 2018 scheme. And then if we whiz over uh, onto Lion Street, we'll see uh, another two. So here's one outside the Windsor Bar by Holly Ferguson. And then another one here by Laura Darling uh, outside uh, JB Sexton. And in fact, this building that uh, Laura has depicted in her mural is the very place that we're going to next. So let's carry on down Albert Street. And here we go, another of the great landmarks of Stobswell, this beautiful building. Uh, so this is the old Dundee Savings Bank, Eastern Branch. Uh, you'll be able to see one of the other branches on the Hilltown tour. Uh, and this one was from 1914 by the architects Alexander Johnson and D.W. Baxter. And it's got lots of lovely decoration on it. Uh, but most notably, this wonderful um, uh, Dundee city crest here. And uh, you can always help to date buildings by seeing which version of the crest they've got on them because uh, in the late 19th and early 20th century, uh, somebody seemed to forget that the, uh, the coat of arms was meant to have dragons on it and instead they depict wyverns. Uh, the key difference being uh, that uh, dragons have four legs and wyverns only have two legs. Um, and so next time you're up against either a wyvern or a dragon, count its legs and at least you'll know which one it is that's uh, burning you alive. Right, let's now uh, head up Arbroath Road and then down Robertson Street and just on these gateposts here we should be able to see a nice little uh, painted piece at the entrance to uh, Robertson Park here and this is one of a number of little signs that were done by David Udney uh, uh, in 2006 to 7, uh, he did a whole series of these in various parks around the area. Uh, so if we were on the walking tour, I would actually take you in the uh, in the park here, and we'd wend our way down uh, around the back of this uh, medical centre down to uh, the community garden. But as we can't do that, we'll just have to whiz down uh, Robertson Street instead, and uh, I'll be able to at least show you uh, some of the community garden. Uh, so this is um, Robertson Street Community Garden and as you'll see it's got this huge great graffiti wall uh, on the back of it uh, which is sort of constantly changing with different designs. It's mostly uh, just different tags here in this one. There's a, a piece by Syke over there on the right. Um, but all sorts of other pieces have appeared and I'll show you some different photos here of some of the different murals that, uh, that have appeared uh, over the years. And there are two other artworks that were created here, both of which you can see here. Uh, so this piece with the, the saltire on it, um, this is a, a weaving sculpture. And this was done as a, a One World Centre, our community space project, with the artist Pammy Bennett working with pupils from Glebeland's Primary School. And so it's got a sculpture element and this nice mosaic uh, piece at the bottom here. And then uh, just behind that, uh, and you can only kind of just make it out uh, on this um, image, uh, but again I'll cut to a photo of it, is this little uh, sort of totem pole sculpture called Tree of Life. 
And this was another One World Centre project. Um, uh, again, Pammy Bennett working with uh, pupils from Gleeburn's primary school uh, who painted one side of the post and the St Andrew's Young Mums group that painted the, the other side. Right, so let's head back up uh, Robertson Street and then just on to Graham Place. And let's see if we can just jump over this onto... Oh, yes, we can. Look at that. Um, now, uh, most of the time I'm grumbling that Google Street View uh, hasn't yet updated to show the new artworks. But, of course, occasionally it gives us the pleasure of being able to look at uh, artworks that don't exist anymore. And sadly, this is one of them. This is another of the open close doors that was done by Pamela Scott. Um, but sadly, the, uh, the pub changed hands uh, uh, last year and they painted over the door, alas. But at least you can still view it on Google Street View. Now, just across the road here, there's a couple of interesting pieces. So um, if we just sort of follow up this little uh, lane here, just in the middle of this little kind of um, walled area with the kind of pergola on it, here uh, is what's left of uh, a rather splendid mural that was created uh, back in 1987 by students on the pioneering public art and design course at Duncan Johnson College of Art. Um, and this was a real landmark course. It was the first uh, course of its kind in the world. And one of the things that made it really important was that students all got to work on live projects. Uh, both individual projects but also group projects and so this mosaic was one of the, the group projects so this is actually the second year of the course and the various students all contributed to creating this uh, mosaic uh, one of whom interestingly was Elizabeth McFall who went on to create various other public art pieces around the city and then ended up working for the, the healthcare arts initiative. Uh, sadly, uh, the mosaic uh, wasn't maintained and gradually, bit by bit, it's kind of disintegrated until now. Uh, this is all that's left of it, uh, which is kind of sad, really. It'd be really nice for it just to be removed altogether and replaced with something new. Um, and then over here, we can see, if I just move down a bit, um, we can see these three uh, rather nice pieces here. And um, so we've got this sort of... Um, zigzag column here, we've got the sphere in the back and we've got this uh, sort of uh, spiralling cone here and they were actually created not for Snobswell but actually uh, originally as part of the the famous Black Nest public art programme uh, in 1984 and they were the work of Jake Kempsell who was head of sculpture at the art college at the time and they were originally intended to go on uh, part of the university grounds that was overlooking the new Hawk Hill bypass. Now, unfortunately, at the last minute, the university changed its mind and decided that they were probably going to build on that site, which indeed subsequently they did. Um, and so the sculptures basically stayed in storage, I think in the art college, uh, for three years until finally in 1987, as part of the landscaping of this whole area, uh, it was decided that they would be, be ideal to um, decorate this new green space area here. And so at the same time that the mosaic was put in place, um, the three sculptures were sited here in 1987. Right, let's head uh, down the road and we'll just head down Princess Street here. Now, I'm not sure how clearly we'll be able to see it. Uh, <laughs> basically, this is obviously them building the new uh, uh, electric car charging points. Unfortunately, there's a skip just in the way there. But just behind uh, this, this is the Dragon's Den bar uh, and just at the back uh, of that there's a nice graffiti uh, mural wall. Various different artists have contributed it uh, since 2017 including Adam Milroy, Paco Graf, Ms Shine, Arcos and others. Okay we're now going to head into Weaver's Yard. So this is uh, around the back of um, Upper Den's works. Um, so this is one of the major um, textile mills in Dundee. It was a linen mill and, and this is one of the mills owned by the Baxter brothers uh, and of course you can see the statue of Sir David Baxter in Baxter Park which I featured in 
uh, part one of this walk. And um, this was the first of the various old mills to be regenerated into uh, flats. And this was a major redevelopment um, done in the early 80s, completed in uh, 1987. And um, it attracted huge attention. It was really, I think, a major symbol of the regeneration of Dundee at that time. It won lots of awards for uh, both the redevelopment of the building, but also uh, the really nice landscaping uh, of the garden area here as well. And um, thanks to the Dundee Public Art Programme and Duncan Johnson College of Art, um, various public art pieces were incorporated into the development. Uh, some of them are actually inside and so there are three works that were all created by uh, again students on uh, the public art course at the Art College. So immediately as you go in and you can see these through the through the glass, uh, these lovely ceramic tile arches by Leslie Burr and then over to the left of that there's this huge big lino and, and wood and, and metal mosaic by David F. Wilson. And then up on the top floor uh, there are these nice chess sculptures by David Franklin. Um, and then there's one other uh, student piece which is just outside uh, the building here. Uh, and unfortunately very difficult to see now because they faded so much but there's these etched aluminium panels uh, in these blocked up windows here by John O'Riordan. Uh, and again, I'll cut some better photos of those. Uh, and so all those were done in 1986 and they were actually uh, students from the very first year of the course. Um, and I mean, they all went on to, to notable achievements, but David F. Wilson particularly, of course, went on to create a huge number of, of public art uh, pieces around the city. And then uh, the other development was uh, when they were doing the garden, this uh, rather nice piece here. So this, of course, echoes the. Um, let's see if I can find it. Uh, oh, you can't really see it very clearly there. Let me um, let me move further away so you can see it better. There we go. So this is an echo of um, the uh, the nice tower on the top of the mill here. Um, I'm not sure whether it's actually is one of the pieces that came off another part of the building or whether it's just a replica I don't actually know but um, anyway on the ground underneath this and again I'll cut to a photo uh, there's a, a nice carved text-based piece um, which is by Francis Pelly. So around the outside it features the names of different sails that were made from the linen that came from uh, Baxter's works uh, we then have uh, different words for linen in different languages and then inside that we have the names of some of the famous ships that uh, reputedly uh, had Baxter Brothers linen uh, in their sails. Um, this does include the Victory which in fact although it's often claimed that Baxter Brothers made the, the sails for the Victory um, they can't have done because the mill didn't exist at the time that that happened. So it was probably somebody else called Baxter that, that made them, but it was definitely wasn't Baxter Brothers Mills, sadly. However, it's a nice story. And then uh, just up on the wall, um, uh, well, there's two, one in the sort of very far wall and one uh, just on the, the left of this piece here. Um, there are a couple of gargoyles that were also carved by Francis Pelly, um, one of which was originally um, a fountain and so it was kind of spewing out water uh, into a little pond below, uh, but that got, uh, got damaged and they had to uh, block it off. Now, at this point, normally I would be able to take you up a lovely set of, of steps uh, up to the top part of the, 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 the garden area here. Uh, obviously, I can't do that on um, Google Street View, so we're just going to cut miraculously to that point. So at the top of this uh, area, and the whole thing is called Milden Park, by the way, um, we have this uh, the blocked up remains of the old uh, Victoria Bridge, and... Uh, underneath the arches, as the song goes. Uh, first of all, at the top here, we have quite a subtle piece that, that you don't always necessarily notice at first, 
which is these three pieces that were uh, again created by John Gray uh, as part of the uh, the district council's uh, landscaping of the area. Uh, he again designed these kind of brick uh, infills and created these really nice little um, sort of inset mural pieces and at first they just look like abstract shapes but when you kind of get into them you sort of realize that they're actually faces and they're apparently faces of some of the the, the mill workers that worked in in Baxter Brothers mills and then below them we have uh, three of the open closed doors so from left to right we have pieces by Steph Little Ryan McLeod and Zoe Gibson. Okay, so we're now sort of heading down uh, out of this park area into uh, Calendar Gardens here. All right, and here we are on Crescent Street and just head up here a wee bit and then turn up onto Brown Constable Street. All right. So, now it might seem slightly odd that this uh, rather unassuming modern nursery school has these uh, rather splendid gateposts with what look like Grecian urns on top of them. Uh, and that's because uh, this nursery school uh, replaced uh, the old Wallace Town public school, which unfortunately was burned down in the 1990s. Um, and that school would have been where a lot of the children that worked in Baxter Brothers mills went to as half-timers. So they'd spend half of their time working in the mill and half their time in the school. And the gateposts were actually made in the Dens Works foundry uh, in 1858. And I'll cut some close-ups, they're rather, rather beautiful, uh, detailed. Uh, I suspect they weren't always painted bright red, <laughs> but that's the way they are now. Right, let's just um, head back onto Crescent Street. And then just on the corner here, we have this nice little park and a couple of pieces to point out in here. First of all, just as you go in on the ground, uh, there's this nice little piece called Fossils, uh, which was created um, by uh, the Trinity Church Mothers and Toddlers Group, working with the artists Carrie Varyavandi and Teresa Lynn, and that was made in 2004. And then at the back of the park on the wall there, there's another of the open close doors, uh, this one by Chelsea Roger, uh, featuring some rather comical foxes. Now, I'm just gonna have to leap over these fences here uh, which is not going to let me do, so I'm going to need to cut here. Right, so we'll just carry on up Crescent Street here and then onto Victoria Street and then back up uh, Brown Constable Street and onto Lion Street. And just a couple of more pieces to point out. Uh, first of all, uh, another of the wonderful open close pieces here. Uh, so this is by Amy Dunn uh, on the Cuts and Colours hairdresser. And I think she was originally just intending to paint the door and then she got very excited and ended up painting the entire shop. And what's great is that the, uh, the people inside the, the work in the hairdresser um, got so enthused that they then painted the whole of their inside uh, to be equally colourful. So it's a, a total riot of colour in there now. Um, and then just over here um, this is another one that's been updated so what we're seeing here is the is the uh, original uh, but this has since been replaced so this is a piece uh, uh, to do with journalism that was created by Paco Graf um, and uh, this is actually a, a hall of residence for Aberté University and so they commissioned the piece. Unfortunately it got graffitied um, uh, a couple of years ago and so in 2018 uh, Paco completely redid it with a new uh, dragon theme uh, as you can see here. Uh, so it's now quite spectacular. Um, so one of the many uh, pieces of public art celebrating Dundee's dragon. Right, okay, so now we're just gonna 
head up Erskine Street and back onto Arthurston Terrace. And here we are back at the library where we started. So, hope you found that interesting. Thank you very much for following me on this journey and do look out for another of our public art walks coming soon. Bye for now.